Jeffrey is trending right now on Twitter, and so a lot of people had questions about what's going on, so let me explain it. A few hours ago, Biden via the New York Times announced that he's allowing Ukraine to use U.S.-provided attack missiles to strike inside of Russia. This is something that Ukraine has been asking for for almost a year now, and now finally they're able to do it. That being said, France and the UK both said from the beginning that as soon as the United States green lights attack them, they will allow the storm shadow from the UK and the scout from France to be used inside of Russia. And well, the moment that that happened, France and the UK says, yes, you can go ahead and use it. Now putting these things in the targets of Ukraine. These are hundreds of Russian military installations, whether they be training bases, whether they be whether naval bases, they could also be airports. All these things are military related are now open. And you can see the red here is territory that Russia took. The yellow is the original area in which Ukraine was able to hit some stuff. But now out to this way, this right here is the attackums. Storm shadows can actually go even further, also hitting Moscow. And so people are wary that if Ukraine hits something that Russia will then respond a certain way, either towards the United States, the UK, or France, since they're saying to Ukraine, it's Joe Biden to make this decision now after months of deliberating over whether or not he was going to allow the Ukrainians to use these long range army tactical missile systems. They are ballistic missiles launched from ground-based systems against targets inside Russia, something that the Americans seem to have been hesitant to allow, concerned that it might then prompt uh, an escalatory response by Russia. But according to reports in the New York Times, the, the sudden decision by the North Koreans to join Russian forces on the battlefield at the moment inside Russia fighting against Ukrainian troops that have seized parts of the Kursk region. That is the trigger for this decision by the United States. And now all eyes surely are going to be on other allies of Ukraine, uh, the UK, for example, which has for, long, for a long time also been asked by the Ukrainians to allow its forces to use their storm shadow cruise missiles against targets inside Russia. The British have been more forward leaning seemingly, more seemingly willing to allow the Ukrainians to use these weapons, but had been waiting for a decision by the United States. Now that seems to have come. All eyes, of course, are going to be on what Keir Starmer, who's going to be here as well in Rio, will say, and whether he will confirm that British missiles can also be used by the Ukrainians. For Joe Biden to make this decision now, after months of deliberating over whether or not he was going to allow the Ukraine. So long, <clears throat> so long, so long. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and teach you well. Peace and salutations be to what for elect. Brother Tazawan coming at you from the prophets in Babylon camp here in Tampa, Florida. Today we're going into uh Uh, President Biden just announced for or gave Ukraine permission to use <clears throat> American made missiles. Okay. Americanized weapons. And the which um, North Korea responded to sending ground troops into Russia to help them defend against the attack. And Putin putting out a grievous warning saying this is going to be. Uh, Dude, this is going to be the start of World War III, pretty much. Which I have here. Now, this is in the End Times headlines. End Time headlines, it says... Putin responds with ominous warning. It says, uh, 
nearly 24 hours after Joe Biden and Washington announced that they had given the authorization for Ukraine to, to use U.S.-made longer-range weapons against Russia. The first deputy chairman of the, of the Russian, Russian Upper House's International Affairs Committee gave an ominous warning that this is a very big step toward the beginning of the Third World War. Okay, so it says will transpire over the next few weeks. Um, will this fizzle out or spiral into a greater regional conflict? All right, so Putin already warned. Like you do, you allow these things to happen. Um, we're going to put out attacks. We're going to attack. Uh, they're pretty much, they're going to uh, take that, take another step towards that World War Three. You know, and it's going to escalate. Basically, they said that Putin was withholding this, withholding from doing this, in fears of not Putin's like it. Biden was withholding from doing this in fears that Putin would go out of, uh, he would, he would, um, do something very drastic, do something very, uh, tragic in response, you know, he would take a very big step in response to that, but now that he sees that, um, he's getting out of office, I guess, so they say he's going to try to do all he can to make a bigger mess than what he what he made before and really it's not even Biden doing these things or calling these shots it's those that control Biden Biden is just a puppet he's just a face okay it's the powers that um, Biden served when he had his mind with him that's still working and operating and using his face as a cover up that man's basically got one foot in the grave he can't remember which word to say next on the screen he can't remember which way the bathroom is or which step to take off the stage and you think that he's making all these plans he probably don't even realize that we're in war right now you know so that just goes to show you that this thing was uh, orchestrated by powers um, that be you know that are greater than biden okay it's bigger than it's bigger than biden now man book of because you just have Putin and Russia you have Putin and Trump you know they're just talking about their they can't wait for their relationship to build they look towards a, a peaceful future and right after that you got Biden making hits on Russia Uh, this is NIV, NIV, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. The two kings, with their hearts bent on evil, will sit at the same table and lie to each other, but to no avail, because an end will still come at the appointed time. And I'm not saying that these are those two kings, but that's a good example. You know, uh, these men may sit at the table and say certain things or towards their future and towards a peaceful future or whatever, you know. But it's going to be to no avail. I mean, it's going to be for nothing, you know, because the end is still going to come at the appointed time. There ain't nothing they can do to change that. You know, no matter how they try to thwart World War Three or the end of this society or the end of this age, this eon, that end still coming at its appointed time. You know. Now you got all this war springing up and rumors of wars getting louder and louder until eventually you see uh, something explode in your in your country in your city in your in your state man right in front of you and you realize it's not a rumor anymore it's really happening uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 6 and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars 
See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So all these things must happen. They gotta come to pass. But the end isn't yet, man. The end isn't come yet. Alright, so keep in mind that you're gonna continue to hear these things. Don't uh, don't don't trouble yourselves, man. Okay. Don't trouble yourselves. Don't don't get up and <laughs> start uh, making hasty decisions. Okay, because there is still more to come. Alright. People speak lightly on World War III. They don't understand the kind of power that these nations have now. These countries, uh, these countries are a lot more powerful than they were before, man. It says Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14. The second woe is past. And behold, the third will cometh quickly. So after the second world war, guess what? The third world war is going to come quickly. The second world war was, you know, you still got people alive that were in it. <laughs> you know? Uh, here we are already talking about the third one. And that's just, this is, this is going to take you unawares, you know? Before you know it, your house is getting kicked down. Your, your door is getting kicked into. Okay. Thieves and robbers coming in. Troops coming in. Okay. About to, you're getting ready to have a lot of visitors, but your main visitor is going to be who? The Lord. Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. Alright. For this transit and transit, I truly hope it was edifying to you. Akim and Akwaf, who listen to truth and sincerity. To next time, Ashrala, I say, Ka Halayim La, Yahawu Ba Shemil Shai Ba Shemil Kokodash. Shalom.